All right, let's get back to it. So in our last video, we were talking about our last uh, time complexity uh, notation for right now in O of n. We were talking about quadratic time, O of n squared. So we've talked about constant time, O of 1, linear time, O of n, and quadratic time, O of n squared. So we have a good understanding of those. There is one last thing that we need to talk about, though, and that's space complexity. Now, there are other time complexity BO, big O notation um, abstractions, such as uh, O of n log n, O of log n. Um, but for right now, knowing the three that we know, constant, linear, and quadratic, that's good enough to get us moving into building out some data structures, and you'll have enough understanding and grasp of it to help with the understanding. However, we do need to touch on one more topic, and this is space complexity. So what is space complexity? Let's take a look here. So space complexity, what is it? Uh, whereas time complexity measures the time to run a program, space complexity measures the memory usage of a specific program. So what makes space complexity, uh, complexity increase? Assigning variables, creating new data structures, and function calling and allocation within within a function body. So basically, any time that you write an algorithm or a program or a small function, if you're trying to look at the time complexity of that, you know that the input, if if uh, if within the function, the amount of time that it takes to run relative to the input, that will give you your time complexity. Similarly, in uh, when allocating uh, when deciding what space complexity is and, and figuring that out. Basically, you just look at the total size of the of any memory usage relative to the size of the input. So it really doesn't matter how large the input is. What matters is if we create new things within the function to deal with the input. So that might sound a little bit uh, contrived and confusing, but let's go to our code editor and uh, let's take a look here. So let's say that we have a function and this function is just called test. And this function test takes in an array, right? And so all we want to do in this function is we'll go for let i equal 0, i less than r dot length, i plus plus. So when we do that, what this what we're actually going to do on the loop is we're, we're just going to console out uh, r at i, right? So then let's go down here and we'll make a const. And r is going to equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll just run the test at r. OK. So let's go down here and we'll go to node 4 dot. There we go. And so what you can see is that it logs out every number in the array. So we know that the time complexity of this relative is dependent on the input is how many outputs we're going to have. So we know that the, the time complexity is O of n, linear time. But what's the space complexity of it? So let's take a look at it. Is there any new is there any new data structures, variables, or function calls being created or allocated within the function body of this? No, there's not. So this, since it's not using any further uh, memory uh, relative to the input, the time the space complexity of this would be big O of one because nothing has changed. We haven't added any new memory to it. Now let's say down here that we have test two. And let's say that this test2 also similar takes in an array. But right here at the top, what we're going to do is we'll just go let count equal, uh, equal 0. And then right here, we'll go const result equals an empty array. Then we'll do our for loop. So for let i equals 0, i less than r dot length, uh, i plus plus. So now when we loop through the array, we're going to be doing a couple of things. We're going to go result.push, or actually let's do it like this. Let's go result at i is equal to r at i, right? And then what we want to do is return result right here. So let's call this uh, test2 with r. We're going to return. We're going to return the results. So instead of console logging it, so we do need to console log down here. There we go. Throw it in there. Let's go down here. We'll save it. We'll go down here and we'll run it. And you can see that it gives us a new array. Now this new array is the results array. It isn't the uh, 
it isn't the array passed in, it's the new array. And we did create a count here, so maybe after every time we do it, we can increase count by one. And then after, before we return that, we can just console.log account or, or account. And then we'll run it again. And you can see that the count is five. So basically the idea is that we have created a new variable here. We've created a new data structure. And this data structure has been filled up with n length of this array. So in this case, since we've created new data structures, allocated new memory because of assigning variables, then we know that the space complexity of this has increased from the relative to the, to the size of the input. So this would be, in terms of space complexity, big O of n. And in time complexity, we know since we have a for loop right there, that it's also big O of n. So if you see the difference, this one, we didn't add anything new to memory. This one, we did. The memory that we added in the top one had nothing to do with the input, so it's big O of 1, it's just, it's just constant. But here, it is dependent. The size of how big this array is going to be filled up with is relative to the size of the inputs in R. So again, it's big O of N. So that's just a touch on space complexity. Space complexity isn't, isn't as hard or as uh, uh, cons uh, all-consuming as time complexity, but it is good to know what it is and to be able to talk about it a little bit. Now, for right now, that is our last video on Big O for a minute because I think that it's getting boring at this point and it, and it will be, you'll be better served by looking at things in a, in a contextual sense to where we're building out data structures and we can talk about you know what the space and time complexity of it of each kind of action that we would take on a data structure that we create would be now last thing I want to show you is that right here at this website called big o uh, cheat sheet .com. so what this does is basically it shows us it graphs out you can notice right here we have big O of n right here, which is linear time, log n, which we haven't got to, and O of 1. Basically, the xy graph shows the operations and the elements right here. So basically, big O of n time, we, we, we saw that as the elements grow in it, the amount of time that it would take to run the function grows linearly. There it is. O of n squared, we were talking about being a slow one. As it scales, it becomes more and more slow. Basically, the in the red is horrible, here is bad, fair, good, and excellent. So we always want to shoot for good or excellent. Sometimes you won't be able to get lower than O of n. Um, but you always want to try to shoot to O of 1, O of n. This log n we'll get to when we get to uh, doing things like binary search, searching arrays, things like that. O of n log n has to do with usually sorting arrays, things like that. So Basically, we'll, we'll get to all these different ones, but for right now, all we need is this O of n squared, O of n, and O of 1 to understand those fully. Also, if you go down here, you can see that different uh, data structures have different O of n time complexities for different actions taking. So for an array, which is going to be the first data structure that we look at, to access is quite quick. It's O of 1 to access something. To search something, it is a little bit slower, though, because you might have to run through every element in the array. So that's O of n. Insertion, also O of n, and deletion. But then if you look at a stack, its insertion is O of 1, which is very fast, and its deletion is very fast. However, its, its uh, access isn't, isn't as fast as an array. So you can see that there are, there are, there are give-offs for, uh, for each different kind of data structure that you use. There are strengths and weaknesses. And as you learn more about them, and you learn more about Big O, and you learn more about how to architect out different data structures, you'll know which ones to use. And that is when you're getting actually very competent at programming because you know what data structure needs to be used for what algorithm. Data structures are just saving memory, and algorithms are just actions taken on that memory. That's basically the best way to think about it. Data structures save things in memory. Algorithms manipulate the things that are saved in memory. And you use big O to determine what is the best course of action to enter to for both of those two to work in Symphony. So we're moving on from big O notation now. The next videos are going to have to do with figuring out what data structures are, and then we're going to start looking at arrays and then stacks, queues, linked lists, all that stuff. The first one that we'll look at is arrays, and we should be getting to that next. So I hope this helped. Getting through the big O part is probably one of the more boring parts of this, but if you've gotten through it, you know 
you know some good stuff. So, uh, and you'll learn more as we go and build this stuff out. So I hope it helped. Take it easy.